Good evening, my name is Jim Campanini. I'm the editor of The Son of Lowell, and I want to thank you for coming out this evening for our uh, Tewksbury debate. Uh, we were here two years ago when they first opened up this beautiful facility. We're, ha we're glad to be back. The Sun is sponsoring, co-sponsoring this debate with Tewksbury Today and also the Tewksbury Town Cry. With that, I'm going to turn over tonight's debate to the moderator, Chris Scott, who's the enterprise editor at The Sun. Good evening, everybody, and thanks for coming out. Um, I just want to establish a couple ground rules. Um, we're going to go about 50 minutes, and hopefully we can get in three rounds of questioning from the panel. Um, the candidates will each be given two minutes to respond to a question, and then the other candidate will have a minute to rebut if he chooses to do so. Um, and the, I'll have a little bit of moderator's discretion that if I feel that the two are really, you know, going at it on a particular issue, we can go a little bit, you know, we can relax the rules just a little bit. Um, I'd like to just um, start by um, introducing the panel. Um, the bearded man to my left, that is Bill Gilman from your Tewksbury Today website. Thanks for coming, Bill. Then we have, we have Joyce Miller from the Tom Cryer. She's the editor. Thanks for coming, Joyce. That would be Jane. Oh, Jane. Okay. I apologize. Jane. And my colleague, Tom Zupa, uh, assistant managing editor days at The Sun. So we decided that um, Jane is going to go first, followed by Bill and then Tom. I'm going to do my best to um, time the responses so we can get we can we can start right now. We're going to, the first question will be posed to the incumbent, Jim Maselli, uh, by Jane. Thank you. Good evening, Jim. Good evening, Jane. Healthcare costs are driving middle class families into financial hardship. With world class healthcare comes world class bills. And many families in this district are suffering, even with health insurance, following a diagnosis of a life-threatening disease or chronic medical condition. Co-pays, high deductibles, and unintelligible billing issues have families going broke. If re-elected, what do you intend to do about it? Re-elected, uh, the way I would approach it, and I see it's a subject that I seem to know a little bit about, the way I would approach it is... Excuse me for a minute, Jim. Can you use the mic? Oh. And you have to hold it right up to your, right up to your mouth. I've done this a few times. Uh, uh, let me just get back to what we were discussing, which was the uh, health insurance. I would make sure that, that we have to tighten up what we're doing at these hospitals. The state house passed a cost containment bill. In fact, I was the only Democrat who voted against it. And it really isn't working, because what it did was open the door as you said, higher deductibles, more co-pays, and it was very, very tough to deal with. And the, as far as the uh, uh, coverage is concerned, people get finding out now that they don't have the coverage they thought they had. Bottom line on the uh, uh, health care, as far as I'm concerned, they've got to stop the expansion, and that's what's happening right now. They're consolidating, expanding. You've got lady taking over... Uh, uh, Addison, Gilbert, Beverly, and what have you, and it isn't working. So you've got to go back to a situation where a uh, funding mechanism has to be uh, discovered, and you've got to start paying as you go again once more, and start paying for uh, situations that, might, that you might incur. Bottom line is, the system isn't working, it's wrong, it's got to be changed. So it sounds like a simple answer, and I think I've got my own ideas how to change it, too. And as far as uh, changing that uh, health care is concerned, you've got to do situation as far as the emergency rooms are concerned. Uh, you just can't walk in, walk in, and get coverage under any circumstances. You've got to stop uh, buying insurance, and that's what you're doing right now. For people who never had insurance before, and I'm talking about uh, illegal immigrants, People okay, really Jim, you're up against the time there. Gee, I was just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sears? On health care, I'm uh, now just getting uh, Medicare, so I'm learning a, a lot about uh, these issues. 
And uh, I am very much in favor of, of Charlie Baker uh, becoming our next governor, as I put a lot of faith in him. Uh, I was an executive at the Department of Industrial Accidents when he was the, uh, was the head of uh, Health and Human Services and the Secretary of Administration and Finance. And then he went on to Harvard, Vanguard Harvard Community Health, and has gone through many names. But I really think that uh, he has a great track record in doing this type of stuff. Now, Jim was talking about uh, the illegal aliens and those folks who are non-residents of Massachusetts who take up an awful lot of the uh, health care uh, dollars. And I think when we talk about more uh, you know, re regulation is try to eliminate as much of that. I mean, if people don't want to live in Massachusetts but get our health care somehow or... Time. They, Okay, thank you. Yep. We'll switch it now to Bill Gilman from your Tewksbury Today report. Thank you. A question for Mr. Sears. Mr. Sears, much is made about the need to cut waste in the state budget. What are some specific areas of waste that you would like to see cut? And would this include the layoffs of state workers? I would first of all continue with what I was talking about before, if we could just in the uh, health care and uh, EBT reform area cut down uh, the amount of money that we're spending. Remember, Representative Jim Lyons came up with a figure of uh, $270 million that is being uh, wasted in this particular area. And I think around that particular area I, I would look to cut. Uh, as a former state worker, I do also don't think that cutting state workers is the necessary panacea. It may be sound good as a soundbite. It's what the state workers are doing, whether it's important work, whether it's value for what is uh, for the salaries given. I think that is where the analysis means should be, not just in a particular you know, class of employees. Mr. Maselli? Yes. Uh, I've got an excellent conservative voting record. If uh, people look at it and uh, seek it out, as far as uh, expenditures are concerned, I'm very conservative. I think I look at every issue and I look at it, how it affects my community, how it affects the Commonwealth, and finally what the cost is going to be. And I go from there. For instance, uh, when you talk about something like the EBT cards and you talk about something like the gas tax, and talk about something like the sales tax. I've always been uh, very stringent on it, against spending more money than is necessary. And as I said earlier, there are times, there are times when things are necessary. But I, I'll continue along the same track, uh, voting very conservatively, voting against major expenditures. And I've got probably one of the most conservative voting records as far as fiscal matters are concerned in the House. Thank you, Mr. Maselli. We will now swing it over to Tom Zupa from The Sun with a question for Mr. M Representative Maselli. Thank you, good evening, gentlemen. Um, there's been a lot of debate in the last year or two about Common Core curriculum and standardized testing. And that includes a symbolic vote here at the Street Town meeting to reject the curriculum and the testing. A lot of the debate is philosophical, but I'd like to ask you two real world questions. Have you read the standards adopted by the state and can you point to a specific standard that explains why Common Core is a good idea or a bad idea? Me, right? Yes. 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 First of all, I opposed Common Core when it was first discussed. We had a meeting with the uh, Commissioner of Education. Uh, we also had two individuals, one from Wilmington, one from Tewksbury, who sat in on those meetings. And the uh, situation is, as far as Common Core is concerned, you're now throwing the old system out. You're now starting to teach to a new system. First of all, it isn't going to work in this sense. It's going to be impossible. It's going to be financially impossible to uh, put this uh, new program into play. And as far as all the studies are concerned, the independent studies are concerned, the children, or the youngsters, I should say, are going to get the kind of education they should be getting and when we talk about that uh, specifically is, in our back, having the teachers teach to the test once more, and it's a new test. So the bottom line is, 
as far as I'm concerned, I'm opposed to it. I opposed it earlier. I find no fault with my colleagues and uh, school committees who take another tact, because basically the, uh, the programs are run out of the Department of Education, are put together out of the Department of Education, and I think you saw at our town meeting. Please wrap it up, Rick Maselli. Yeah, it leaves the town very little play in this situation. Bottom line is, it's a bad system. You're now going to take the kids and you're going to put them on, and I say kids of all ages, probably. Okay. And you're going to put them on a new program. Thank you. Mr. Sears? Well, under the ed reform of uh, Senator Birmingham and Governor Well back in 1983, I think we got it about as right as we could do. And uh, Massachusetts the public schools have done really uh, fantastically well with the, you know, the MCAS program and all that goes with it. Now along comes the Common Core, and uh, we at the Republican Town Committee have taken a good uh, look at it. Ruth Chu is here in the audience and some other folks uh, who brought this to the town meeting. And uh, sort of the philosophical uh, aspect of it is local control. Uh, the town uh, school committee they were separate. Uh, it was a three to two vote. It wasn't a unanimous vote to do this. Uh, we sort of decided that, you know, well, we, uh, we're going to have to do this in a year, so we might as well take a test run at it. Uh, but I think that uh, Massachusetts standards and uh, local uh, Tootsbury standards are perfectly uh, acceptable and fine for our children here, and I would look forward to our uh, state okay. getting out of this one size cookie cutter fits all. I mean, what? Okay, I mean, thank you, Mr. Sears. We'll now switch over to the editor of the town courier for a question for Mr. Sears, I believe, right? Good evening, Mr. Sears. Good evening. Natural gas prices are rising, partly due to a lack of pipelines in the Northeast and uh, to supply natural gas fired power plants, and partly due to last year's polar vortex. Remember that? Yes. A new high-pressure transmission pipeline is proposed to run through Tuxbury and Wilmington. Do you support the initiative, and what solution do you support to cut energy prices? I would say any pipeline that comes by an eminent domain anywhere should uh, go through as a few uh, people's uh, uh, you know, homes and you know, have disruption as possible. Um, I think there's some alternative routes that I have read about to the uh, route that is currently planned. But we do need to have you know, heat, we, uh, and we do need to uh, you know, have power. And uh, alternate, right now, we, we don't, you know, coal is out, oil is up, natural gas is, is going up, uh, solar uh, isn't making it in the Cape Wind, and uh, people's houses, people are trying to put uh, you know, solar panels on. So, we have a need and uh, trying to find something that's clear that doesn't wreck the neighborhood and uh, is able to meet our needs is a great challenge. And I don't claim any particular magic uh, ball that's going to do this. I know rates, rates are going up, uh, you know, that uh, many folks are trying to get, uh, you know, get out of uh, their current provider. And uh, those are options that, that folks have. I won't name the names, but there are some ones that keep calling and uh, offer this stuff. So if the pipeline needs to come through, I would say, but it should be as least disruptive as possible of the neighborhoods through where it goes. Thank you, Mr. Sears. Reverend Sully? Yeah. Basically, there's a lot of discussion right now, and the discussion is about moving the current layout, uh, moving the current layout Right now in Tuxbury, you've got them going through backyards, front yards, and we're talking about following the main highways uh, and following a route of that nature. Until we settle upon a route, uh, and I'll say it very emphatically, we shouldn't talk about disrupting people's lives and putting a pipeline through uh, someone's backyard. However, you do need the energy, and by the way, oil is going down, you do need the energy and what we've got to settle upon, and there's a lot of work going on right now, citizens groups at the State House, finding a route that's compatible for everyone. Finding a route that works. And uh, I'm going to commit myself to that, and I did a while back too. Thank you, Mr. We Masella. do need the energy, obviously. We'll switch it now to Bill Gilman. Bill, you have a question to Mr. Maselli, I believe. Representative Maselli. 
Given the fiscal problems the state continues to have in the areas such as veterans care and benefits and Medicare reimbursements, do you believe that pensions for elected officials in Massachusetts should be eliminated? First of all, I could give my pension up tomorrow morning. My wife would probably shoot me, but uh, I could. But I serve on the Public Service Committee, and we're fine-tuning all of the systems, including the uh, pension systems. And when you talk about veterans' benefits, in the Commonwealth of Mass, we've got the best veterans' benefits in the country, number one. We have, and I think you're talking more about the national level, about the waiting line to get into the hospitals, which I think is unconscionable, but I think we're on our way to trying to remedy that. We've got to take care of our veterans. I belong to a group called iPods for Veterans, and they visit uh, hospitals in Washington, D.C. and what have you, and work with the uh, disabled vets. Bottom line is, the question that you had is, should uh, legislators give up uh, pensions? Well, legislators are employees like anyone else in the uh, Commonwealth, and we're fine-tuning it. Before you had people who could serve one year as a moderator and get a full year's credit toward their pension. I'm on that committee. We're really doing, I'll tell you, we're doing a good job. And uh, before, if you were a legislator, uh, you could serve uh, uh, three years, and now we've expanded that also and get the three highest years. We're expanding that too. So bottom line is, answer your question, should we uh, force legislators to give them up? When you put it in that context, when you talk about uh, having uh, folks uh, give up their uh, pensions and you stack it up against the veterans, veterans are always going to get their veterans' benefits. They will. And uh, we're going to see that they do. And I think on a national level, Congress, President, and uh, the Senate, obviously, are working hard towards making sure that the coverage that they have is adequate and the coverage that they deserve. So the uh, bottom line, once again, I'm not evading the question is, I don't think you have to do that. Thank you, no. Representative. Mr. C, is your chance to respond? Veterans' ben benefits should definitely remain the same. Uh, we have a philosophical difference about the nature of the legislature. Uh, Back in earlier times, uh, legislators were farmers. Uh, after the fall harvest, they went into Boston, and the spring came out, they went to uh, plant the crops. And uh, that way they were looked at as maybe the legislative duties were full-time, but it's a part-time job. And everybody else had something else they could do. Uh, now we have folks who serve over the long term and identify themselves and, uh, you know, as, as politician, professional politician, or or a uh, legislator, uh, and it, it does sound like a uh, you know, regular kind of executive uh, type of, of position. I just don't think that uh, the legislature really should be a, uh, a, you know, a full-time position in, the, in its definition, and I also think that... Uh, okay, Mr. Sears, thank okay, you. Thank you. Are you collecting a pension, state pension? I'm not a legislator. Are you collecting a state pension? You want to talk? From a job you got fired from? Mr. Maselli, do you have a do you have an official question there? Because I'll allow me, this to go no, for that. Right. No, but you just have to love Jim for, for the way he does. He's so polite. <laughs> now, you know, we'll we'll move it on right now. Uh, we'll swing it over to Tom Zuba with a question for uh, Mr. Sears. Mr. Sears, the Center for Public Integrity looked at public access laws in all fifty states, and it graded Massachusetts a big fat F. The legislature, governor, and courts are exempt from public records laws, and legislative votes are not recorded in committee. If you're elected, what bill will you file during your first term to improve transparency in government? I'm all for, the, you're the public records uh, prober uh, expert on the sun, and I'm all in favor of that. I, I actually love the public records, uh, especially if people don't give it to you, you then wait 10 days and go ask for it and try to get it. I think what we need to do certainly is to give the Secretary of the Commonwealth a bit of a boot so that he can actually uh, do uh, what he's charged of, of doing and getting these public records out in 10 days. Also, le the legislature, I think, should also be uh, able to you know, have the transparency, which uh, apparently uh, other areas of the 
uh, state actually have the town of Tewksbury, uh, the town of Wilmington, and uh, I, I would move to have the legislature you know, included because hiding behind closed doors and doing all of that uh, type of stuff is what's gotten Beacon Hill into the mess that it's in now uh, and over the years. So uh, that, I think, filing bills in that direction would be, I think, very helpful to take some of the, you know, the smarminess out of uh, the Beacon Hill uh, actions. Thank you, Mr. Sears. Um, Jim, you have one minute to respond. One minute to respond. First of all, I agree. Uh, it should be transparent. And I have no compunction about uh, filing a bill, if there's one filed every year, filing a bill and making sure we do that in the future. None whatsoever. I voted uh, to do that at one time, and there have been times when I haven't. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, these, uh, this should be open. It should be open to the public. And I, I'll go along with the same thing. We should uh, give some impetus to the Secretary of State to make all of this available. Thanks, Mr. Maselli. Uh, Jane, you have a question now for uh, Representative Maselli. Thank you. This question is on mental health. Our communities have experienced numerous suicides in recent years, particularly among young people. Adjusting for inflation, Massachusetts remains last in New England in terms of growth in its mental health budget and still has not recovered from massive cuts in 2009. What will you do or what have you done to improve access to mental health care? I have a hospital in my district, as you know, the Tewksbury Hospital. Part of that is a mental health facility. I've been the biggest supporter, and they will tell you that I have actually uh, supported amendments and gotten them through the legislature to increase these budgets at the uh, hospital. Bottom line is, uh, when you talk about mental health, I kind of digress too also into things like the detox center, rehab programs, and the Tewksbury Hospital has the best. As far as I'm concerned, and it's easy to say, but I think I've got the record that shows it, I have supported always, always, expanding the mental health budget. Always. And as I say, the, uh, uh, the people who are with the Department of Public Health, Mental Health, usually come to us when they're trying to increase their budget. Thanks, Mr. Masson. Mr. Sears? Well, I served on the Tewksbury Hospital Board of Trustees for 12 years and found that, that it, the mental health uh, area is sort of second to none. Uh, those who are fortunate to get into the Tewksbury Hospital uh, are well, are doing well. What I'm concerned about are all the folks who get deinstitutionalized or out in the streets who have mental health issues that are uh, affecting uh, themselves and everybody around them. And that's where I find that, you know, not just supporting of uh, you know, state facilities, but being able to be out and having places where those who are mentally ill can uh, can come and uh, you know not end up in jail, not end up being uh, you know necessarily in a hospital, but somehow they can be taken care of in their homes and in day treatment centers. Uh, this is where I would put my emphasis, and I know Jim is a, really likes Tewksbury Hospital, uh, and I do too. But there are other areas too. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now take, um, switch it to Bill. Uh, Bill, you have a question for Mr. Sears? Thank you. There is a decent chance that the winner of this election, of your election, will have to work with a governor from the opposing party. Do you see yourself as somebody who is able to work cooperatively with opposition party leadership, or do you see it as more important to stand your ground on principles? I think this country is based on people who stood their ground on principle, so that's not something I would shy away from. Uh, parties, uh, when this country is founded, we didn't have Democrats or Republicans, and I'd sort of go to uh, uh, look at our uh, beginning roots there. Uh, I would certainly work, work with folks across the aisle. I'm, I'm, there, there are people who cause problems, and there are people who try to fix them. I'm concerned with being on the side of, of fixing problems, and uh, that's, that's what, if working with other people, whoever they are, if they want to work with me and I want to work with them, we get a problem to solve, hey, that's what we're in government for, uh, period. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Representative? Yes, uh, I think that's where I have an advantage. I've worked with both of the individuals 
who were running for governor. I worked with Charlie Baker when he was uh, secretary of ANF, and the door was always open. I was able to get a lot of things done uh, in the district, and that's without compromising your principles. He was always a, a fine gentleman to work with. I've worked with the uh, Attorney General in the past on uh, various legislation. So I think uh, I can hit the ground running as far as uh, both of these folks are concerned. And I never, ever, since I've been in the legislature, ever compromised my principles. Thank you, Mr. Maselli. We'll now switch to Tom Zupa. Tom, you have a question for Representative Maselli. Representative Maselli, assume the winner of this election not only gets two more years in the legislature, but a magic wand. You could accomplish one thing by, by swiping the wand and getting, making your wish come true. What would your wish be for this district? We're talking about the district. Right. right? First thing that I would do is make sure that the hospital is well funded. Uh, that is something that I would be working on. And most importantly, I'd want to create jobs. Like for instance, uh, Wilmington, uh, and I was a selectman in Wilmington, we have fantastic growth. We've got a lot of industrial parks, tremendous industrial base. We've got $14 million in free cash in Wilmington. I want to bring Tuxbury up to the same place. That's what we need to do. That would take care of a lot of the problems that we have in the community right now. So we've got to build the industrial base here, start generating more cash, more revenue. And uh, if I had my, and you said one wish, they sound like I'm going all over the map like a kid at Christmas. But basically, it's to bring Tewksbury back up where they belong. And I'll tell you, it's coming, because Tewksbury is next in line. Wilmington, as far as industry is concerned, has more industry per capita than the city of Pittsburgh. So uh, that's the one thing that I'd like to do. Thank you, Representative. Mr. Sears? Well, let's talk about the 300-pound uh, elephant or, uh, in the room here that nobody talks about. We're talking about, like, Tewksbury, I don't know the numbers for uh, Wilmington. Tewksbury has about a quarter of a billion dollars in debt for people who are, uh, have drawn pensions and for the health care of those who are drawing pensions or are working here uh, for the town. That's not going to go away until uh, we can find some way of chipping away at it. Hopefully the, the legislature, if we're able to you know, cut out uh, some of the uh, waste that I mentioned earlier about uh, spending all this money on those who aren't uh, legally in this country, perhaps that can be moved toward remediating uh, some of this debt. But we are totally in debt, and yes, we need to have jobs, and I feel you know, God bless, and hopefully we all get them. But uh, this, uh, this debt situation uh, for our communities and for other communities across the state. This is just local debt. This is not state debt. Thank you, Mr. Senior. Federal debt needs to be resolved. Thank you, sir. A question from Jane from the town crier for Mr. Sears. Last summer, excuse me, last summer, Tewksbury voted down a casino initiative, and now a question is on the ballot that could reverse the course for other cities and towns that already have casino construction underway. Your opponent voted in favor of the legislation that made this possible. Where do you stand today on this ballot question? Well, as a member of the Board of Selectmen, we brought it before the people, and that was our job. I was in favor of bringing it before the people. I'm not in favor of casinos. I don't play them myself. I never would do that. Uh, it's a jobs. This is looked at as a jobs issue. Yes, we need the construction jobs. Yes, we need uh, all of the jobs that would go in the casinos, but they're tanking around the country, like seven of them, six or seven in, in New Jersey already are going down. Uh, they're all, uh, you know, there's no effective mechanism of enforcing the promises that they will you know, come from, uh, you know, in, in the beginning. So I just don't, you know, aside from all of, all of the problems of, you know, of gambling uh, that we all know about, I just don't, I, I wouldn't bet on it, and uh, it's not something that I'm in favor of uh, when this uh, question comes before me on the ballot. Thank you, Representative Maselli. Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, as far as uh, casinos or slot machine piles in the uh, River are concerned, I worked hard, fought hard, in opposition to this proposal. 
because it doesn't belong here. Secondly, when we talk about the question as far as uh, legalizing gambling, the uh, law in Massachusetts is really limited. We've got very uh, few casinos that can be built in the Commonwealth of Mass. And uh, one slot parlor, which is uh, almost up and running now, bottom line is I'm going to support the ballot question because I don't think it would be fair, be fair to these folks to kind of just take away, uh, and I'm talking about the towns and, not, and the cities who opted for this program and the public who opted for this program. I don't feel that we should be pulling the rug out from under them. And if you look at the Massachusetts law, it is limited, and I will vote for it. And let me tell you, you can't sneeze at the number of jobs this is going to create. And I'm not talking about the jobs in the slot piles. Hey, wrap it up, sir. I'm talking about the construction jobs. Thank you very much. We'll now switch it to Bill Gilman from your Tewksbury today with a question for Representative Maselli. Thank you. Earlier this year, Massachusetts passed and signed into law legislation to toughen the state's gun laws. Under the new law, police chiefs will now be able to refuse to grant permits for shotguns or rifles to anyone they deem dangerous. Do you support this new law and do you trust the judgment of the police chiefs in the district to enforce this law fairly? I trust the police chiefs implicitly. However, there's another part of that law that talks about education and there's no means uh, wherewithal as far as the funding was concerned in uh, that law. We still had questions. In fact, I think the Republican Party voted in mass, and I stand to be corrected, in opposition to that bill, and I had a problem with that bill too. Uh, basically, there were some good parts of that bill, but there's got to be some changes. I don't have a problem with the Chiefs, but I'll tell you one problem I do see. What I do see is you're going to be backing up uh, hearings on uh, appeals as far as uh, Chiefs training down people who apply for these permits. So uh, there are still some inherent problems in the bill, and uh, I didn't support it. Thank you, Representative Maselli. Mr. Sears? I think we have enough gun laws, and uh, the ones that we've uh, got have been described, we, we all know about it. Uh, I am uh, not in favor of uh, you know, assault weapons, but I think people should be licensed to, to carry if they are uh, you know, suitably uh, uh, present themselves, and that uh, the Second Amendment is, uh, is strong, uh, and I support that. What I would like to see, as Representative Maselli also mentions, education about uh, uh, you know, how to be a responsible uh, gun owner and not hurt yourself, for example, uh, with, your, with your gun, and not to hurt anybody else. So responsible, educated uh, uh, gun ownership, gun use uh, is something I do support. Thank you, sir. I'll swing it now to my colleague, Tom Zuper from The Sun. Tom, do you have a question for Mr. Sears? Uh, Mr. Sears, the state budget increased $10 billion since 2006, yet the total amount of state, local aid to cities and towns remains $400 million less than pre-recession levels. What's happening here, if you go back to the state house or up to the state house, what will you do to fix it? Inflation is going to keep going, and the, the budget is always going to at least go uh, with the uh, rate of inflation, unless someone does something to cut it. And uh, I do think, uh, particularly with uh, you know, Charlie Baker's management skills, which I was able to observe uh, firsthand uh, when I was an executive with the Weld administration, uh, had some arguments with the Patrick administration, perhaps, uh, that uh, the uh, management that of, of, of being able to you know, essentially do more with less, cut back, as I've said before, on uh, health care and benefits to those who don't even want to live in Massachusetts or who don't or, or are not here legally. I think that is a particularly, uh, you know, you know, ripe for cutting area. Uh, I think that all, uh, all areas of the state uh, system should be, have, have an audit for, you know, efficient, this, efficiency and effectiveness to make sure we're getting our uh, value for the dollars uh, that we provide. Thank you, sir. Representative Maselli? As far as the uh, budget is concerned, I voted for uh, cuts in the past. 
Uh, right now, though, uh, I think uh, the budget is taking care of itself in one respect. Right now, there's been an edict that we're going to start cutting back, and all about the major facilities in the Commonwealth of Mass, and uh, you can check this out, have been told to cut their budgets significantly and don't look for any supplementary budgets, which you know are budgets that are usually put it through later to pick up the shortfall. So uh, as far as uh, budgets are concerned, uh, I voted for, usually uh, vote for something that would uh, bring them more into line, more into line with what the uh, private sector is uh, doing. But let me say this, once I- Okay, wrap it up, sir. Okay, thank you. Mr. Sears, you want to take another shot at that? I just want to ask, uh, I was wondering if there's a $78 million outside sections that just was uh, went through, and I was just wondering whether uh, what whether the representative voted for that or against that and why. You want to respond to that, Representative? $78 million section. Be more specific. Be more specific. Well, there was an outside... Okay, give them the mic. A, a total of $78 million went, uh, was voted on recently. You may have missed it, but... No, uh, I didn't miss anything. Okay, yeah. so this is what I'm talking about. Wondering, uh, then, did you vote for the $78 million uh, supplemental budget? Did you vote for part of it? Did you vote for against it? Where did you stand? Okay, there's a question. Mr. Maselli, can you answer that question? The question is that... He's not talking about a supplemental budget. What he's talking about, the resolution as far as local aid was concerned, because that's the only thing that I can think of that's in that 70 odd million dollar category. They voted against it. Thank you. We'll now switch it to Jane from the town crier. Jane, because you have it was a question. monopoly money, Jim, that's what it was. Jim, please. Jane, you have a question for Mr. Maselli. I do, thank you. you should fire away. Uh, gentlemen, you were both characterized by an organization called Mass Citizens for Life as pro-life candidates this, this round. Um, Representative Miselli, you voted against legislation this summer that would keep pro-life protesters from blocking access to reproductive health centers. So I'd like for you to explain to the women here your stance on reproductive rights and where you stand on buffer zones. Want to rephrase that part of your question about the vote that I took? You said you quoted the vote that I took. This is the legislation. Yeah, I, know, I know what it is, but you said that I voted against. The My understanding zone. is you voted against legislation that would prevent pro-life protesters from blocking access to reproductive health centers. I voted uh, for. Uh, uh, the amendment that allowed uh, pro-life protesters uh, to, uh, they don't block it, to uh, approach people and talk to them. I voted for that. And as far as, uh, if you're trying to put me in a niche, put me in a category, you'd have to say that I'm pro-life. Thank you. Mr. Sears? I think abortion should be safe, legal, and rare. I do not think that a, uh, a man should be able to tell uh, a, a woman particularly uh, how to uh, deal with uh, medical issues that she has, and I would say uh, that in cases of certainly rape uh, and incest, uh, the abortion could be considered. I'm not in favor of abortion. I would be pro-life. I do not think that, for example, a uh, ectopic pre pregnancy, tubular pregnancy, uh, you know, should uh, you know, threaten the life of a woman uh, without it uh, being able to uh, be ameliorated. Uh, and I do not think that uh, people uh, you know, should uh, hound other people, whether at, at, at clinics or, or any place, that we should harass people for whatever reasons. Thank you, sir. Could I uh, just say something? Uh, sure, you can take a crack at it. Be polite. Right now, the uh, uh, law of the land is uh, the abortion. Abortion is illegal. And of course, if you're in public office, you have to uphold the law of the land. But I thought we started off by talking about uh, as far as the uh, uh, buffer zone was concerned. And I did vote uh, to allow folks to uh, approach people and talk to them. Not to harass them, not to uh, 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 make life uh, hard for them. But bottom line is it's the law of the land. And uh, 
you know, that's what it is. Mr. Sears, do you have anything else to add? I respect the law of the land. Thank you, sir. We're now switching to Bill from New York Tewksbury today with a question for Mr. Sears. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sears, could you please describe your chosen methods, if you're elected, for keeping the lines of communication open with the boards and the residents of your community? And how much of this communication uh, would be done personally by you? Uh, and how much uh, would be done by staff members that you might hire? Well, having no staff members that I might hire, uh, I would, uh, for office hours, I would actually appear there. I wouldn't send a, a, a proxy. And I would hold office hours, and I would, I'm very interested in the, in the problems and joys that people have, and I look forward to holding office hours. Uh, being a selectman, I think it's really important that uh, the representatives uh, keep in touch with uh, the selectmen and you know, personally show up. However, a representative should not act as a selectman and you know, get involved in uh, uh, you know, backing certain races on a local level and uh, getting involved in political squabbles and trying to you know, micromanage and tell people what to do at town meeting. So those are things that I wouldn't do but I would be uh, respectful of the, of the, uh, of the boards uh, and particularly would never walk into a town meeting and uh, you know, unbalance a budget just because I felt I would support a particular uh, uh, special interest. So those are some of the things I would do. And do I sense an accusation in that response? Well, perhaps. Okay, Representative Maselli, take it away. Yeah. Uh, thank you. First of all, I always uh, live by one uh, uh, model. As far as uh, office hours are concerned, when I can be there, I'm there. If I can't be there, someone else is there. And that's very important. Let me tell you, a lot of people make promises. When I got elected, I said that I would hold office hours in every community, both towns, and I've done it since first elected. Secondly, as far as the uh, boards are concerned, I got a great letter from the uh, school committee and the uh, superintendent thanking me for the efforts on their behalf in obtaining some funding for some very critical programs. I got a nice letter from the Board of Selectmen in Tewksbury saying that they also thank me for the work that I've done on their behalf and they look forward to working with me. So I've had a great relationship with all of the boards. Do we agree on everything? No, and we shouldn't agree on everything. And they remember one thing, you have to remember one thing. I work with the boards, not for the boards. I work for the people in Tewksbury and Wilmington. That's who I work for. And as far as getting involved in elections, that's okay, wrap up. right, and I will do it. I will continue to do that, and I think if you, if you okay. sacrifice and you give that right up, <clears throat> you've got nothing at all. Thank you. Okay, my records indicate it's time for Tom to ask a question, and we've got to start watching the time here in order to give the candidates a chance to ask one another a question, then for a minute closing statement. So maybe this might be the last question. We'll see how it goes. Okay, Tom, you have a question for Representative Maselli. Representative Maselli, how do you stand on the ballot question to expand the bottle bill? I'm against it, adamantly, and I've always voted against the bottle bill while I've been in the legislature, too. I'm against it as well. Well, I guess we'll... So there's plenty of time left. Yeah, I guess we have some time. Uh, Jane, you have a question for Mr. Sears? I do. Uh, gentlemen, this would be a good final question. I would like you both to tell us one thing you admire in your opponent. That's not a joke. His tenacity. No comment. Sure. You don't want to thank him for that? That was his comment two years ago. No class. Okay, we'll move on. Um, last chance, Jim. Bill, you have a question for Representative Maselli. Okay. Uh, efforts are being made to, uh, and you mentioned this actually earlier tonight, efforts are being made to grow uh, economic development in Tewksbury. Uh, but with economic growth comes additional strain on infrastructure. Uh, especially as relates to traffic along Route 38. So uh, what uh, would you do, what have you done personally to help facilitate the improvements 
that are needed to be made along Route 38. Yes, that's you, Representative Senator. Yeah. We have $10 million in the bond issue for Route 38 in Wilmington. And what I would do, and I've done this before, is to uh, work with the administration and work with the Department of Transportation to get as much of that funded as possible and so that we could really put that back into hard dollars. So there is $10 million in there right now, as far as 38 is concerned, but it's a bond issue. And I see people here from the Department of Transportation. And a bond issue does not become a reality until the administration decides to uh, fund it. And I would work hard to make sure we do. And uh, Route 38, and as you said, with expansion and with growth comes uh, uh, problems as far as traffic is concerned. I hope we get those problems in this respect. I want to see the growth. I want to see the financial well-being of this community become a reality. And as far as the infrastructure is concerned, we will take care of that. I've made promises like that before, and I've kept them. Thank you, sir. Mr. Sears. Well, the representative has had 37 years to get this right, and the road is still not all that good. So I would uh, hopefully that in the future, uh, the things that he said might happen, whoever's sitting in his seat, and uh, to have uh, Route 38 be the uh, highway of choice for Tewksbury and Wilmington business would be something I would personally look forward to as well. There was clearly a shot there, Mr. Oh, yeah. Masella, you want to respond? Absolutely a shot. Let me say this, I've got a list of all of the things that I have accomplished as far as this community and uh, the town of Wilmington is concerned. And these are things that I've brought to fruition. Not things that happened by osmosis, things that I actually got in the budget and got done. As far as Route 38 is concerned, we have spent some money on Route 38 from time to time. It's a shambles now, and uh, we had a meeting, see you weren't there. We had a meeting at the Department of Transportation earlier this year with other members from, of the Board of Selectmen. I think the town manager was there. And that was the issue we talked about, doing something about Route 38. And with the conversation, hard work, okay, try to I think up. we will. The, bond, the money is in that bond issue. All we've got to do is make sure it's out of there. Okay. Mr. Sears, you want a quickie here? Just well, I wasn't invited. Uh, talk is cheap and uh, performance rules. Okay. Okay, we're, um, we're at 10 minutes of 8, and I want to give each You're candidate a master of that. I, I, I want to give each candidate a chance to ask one another a question, then we'll have a one-minute closing statement. So, um, Mr. Sears, you can go first since Mr. Maselli opened. You have a question, and then, Jim, you have two minutes to respond. Hearing the list of, of things that he is proud of, uh, uh, wondering, uh, moving beyond your constituent services to Tewksbury and Wilmington, and your well-known abilities to get public employees to the, do their jobs for residents of the 19th Middlesex District. In the 37 years you have served in the Massachusetts House of Representatives, you have had opportunities to sponsor bills that have become law. What bill that has become law that you alone have initially sponsored would you consider as representative of what your constituents would be proud to mark as your legacy as a member of the Commonwealth's Great and General Court? Okay, Jim, two minutes. The bill that I'm most proud of, and this goes back a bit, uh, and I did this in conjunction with someone else too, was the abolishment of the counties in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It saved the communities a lot of money and gave them something that they had strived for for many years. I have filed many, many bills, and uh, many of them have become law. Anything in uh, particular? Uh, I filed a bill for the communities, and uh, as I said, uh, the uh, bill that I was very much involved in was the bill when we went from raising money to fund schools to start taking it out of the uh, sales tax, and I became involved in that. The other bill that I'm most proud of is when we drive through this town and we see the library, when we see the uh, library here in town, the, town, the state wanted to sell that land to the community and I filed a bill and an appropriation that made it a gift to the town. That's one of those things that I'm most proud of, too. And I think that contributes great to the education. And I've been involved in schools, both communities, as far as getting those funded also. And uh, 
you know, I, I could go on forever. I've got a good list. I'm sure you could. Okay. Now, Mr. Maselli, this is your opportunity. Okay, guys, thanks. Mr. Maselli, you can ask Mr. Sears a question. Mr. Sears, very shortly, the people in the town, and I asked you this question last year, the people in the town of Tewksbury are going to get hit with a massive bill, and you have to take a great deal of responsibility for it because you voted for that sewer slash water program, and you voted to get the uh, 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 lump sum payment down the line, and a lot of these people are going to have a hard time paying for it. How do you rationalize your taking that stand? I asked you this last year. You never answered it. Okay, Jim, you ask the question. Again. Give him the mic. Well, as I recall, the word uh, rank uh, skullduggery came out of your vocabulary at the time. I got on the board in April of that particular year, and it was voted on in the, the um, May of that particular year. So I had a full month uh, to uh, study this particular issue. Now, the uh, bills went before the town meeting. Now, Mr. Maselli said, oh, you don't do that. Well, that's what everybody did. We all went to the town meeting, and the four other selectmen who he hasn't thrown under the bus, and one of them we actually, behind most of this, is now our town moderator that he put in. Uh, but what uh, the town meeting voted this in, now he thinks that it should go to a uh, vote on the ballot. Well, it didn't. Uh, this is what the town did. As I say, I had a, I had a month to, you know, to look at this. Uh, it is what it is, and uh, the legislature actually could have uh, helped us out, but didn't because there is a, uh, a fund there through the Department of Revenue that would help out these people, uh, us when we need to get money, and the legislature unfunded the bill. So Mr. Maselli can tell me how wrong I am, however, uh, I am not. Thank you. Thank you. No, Jim, that's it. No, Jim. That's it. You have one minute. If you want to use your, your one minute closing statement to respond to that, you can. Can I sacrifice my closing statement? Yep. Yes, you can. To respond to Do you him? want to use your one minute to respond to that? No, it isn't worth it. Thank you. Okay, I'll you're use welcome. My one minute closing Gentlemen, statement. it's time for that one minute closing statement, okay? Um, Jim, you can go first. When I came to town, both in Wilmington and Tewksbury, I made a promise. I promised. I would hold office hours, and I said that earlier. Every month, every year, and we've done that. But more importantly, I promised each and every individual that I would be accessible. In fact, my opponent, four years ago, Mario Marchese, wrote a beautiful letter, beautiful letter to the town crier, saying that he's worked with my office, worked with me, and he's found it a, a refreshing uh, uh, breath of fresh air that, he could, that we would uh, work with him, try to get things done. The point I'm making is that I'm there, people need help, I'm there to get things done, and I work with them and I've accomplished that. I've had people who were turned down by their insurance companies on health insurance, on life-saving operations, and we've gotten the funding for them. So the point I'm making is take care of the hardware as far as uh, uh, legislation is concerned for the two communities. Wrap it up, Jim. Take care of the uh, 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 projects they need, projects they have funded. We just got the uh, Jim, Glen Jim. Road project out the bid. <laughs> so uh, I'm there. I think Jim, you want me to come and take that I can mic. take you on a tour. One more thing. I can take you on a tour and point out the things that I've done. Put in the budget, not by osmosis, okay, not by... Jim, okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> you want to get a good one? Doug, you get a few more minutes. You get a few extra seconds. Few minutes, okay, thank you. Well, Jim, I'm a constituent of yours, and I've been trying to have lunch with you for the last several years, and uh, you know, it hasn't uh, really happened. Uh, but I, I would accept uh, uh, being able, I don't even pay for it. Uh, my professional and personal life has been one of public service and continues to be. I'm a, a licensed professional in teaching ministry and law, and have served local elected offices for 15 years worked as an executive in a state agency for 20 years helping those injured on the job. I spent 14 years teaching in public and private secondary schools. And whereas the incumbent's goal is to become the longest serving house member, 
when elected, I will serve a minimum of, a maximum, excuse me, of two terms, and then step aside so others in 19th Middlesex can build on the cooperative relationship between town boards and the legislature that I seek to renew for the citizens of Tewksbury and Wilmington. The pivotal question from November 4th is, do memories of a past good job determine the best direction for our town's future? For his 52 years of service, the incumbent deserves all the honor and respect our community can give. And as a constituent, I respect the incumbent's long service, and I agree with those that tell the time for the incumbent to retire past long ago. Okay, wrap it up. I want to work with Charlie Baker when he becomes our new governor, and I humbly ask for your vote on November 4th to be your state representative. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. It's now 8 o'clock. Thank you for attending, everyone. I hope you stay around for our next debate between Alex Mispoli and Barbara Natalian for the state senate seat from this town and several others. Thank you very much.